that when I started my company as a sideline when I was still active in the studios, mm -hmm. I uh, I was inspired by when this was very popular called the, the whole yep. catalog. Now, this is a, an addition from spring 2001. And we were in there on this page. Mm -hmm. And I started the company initially working with Ken Southworth, whose name you've seen on the World of Lance cartoons. And um, the Hanna-Barbera cartoons, a lot of the Snagglepuss cartoons. And uh, he wanted to do a home instruction video to pass on some of his knowledge. And this company had been stringing him along, and he has been long retired living in Anaheim. And I saw how earnest he was and how, how much he wanted to do this, you know. I said, well, I can do that for you. It's not going to cost us very much money. And so I did the first volume with him, and uh, the whole tune catalog picked it up. And they liked it so well, and it, it sold so quickly and so well. We made our initial investment back, and so we did two more volumes. Hi, I'm Ken Southworth, and I've been in this business for 50 years. I started a long time ago at Walt Disney's, stayed there for six years. I think the first thing I worked on was Three Caballeros and learned an awful lot, worked with some wonderful people in those days. You've all seen in old movies where the stagecoach comes to a stop and the wheels apparently start to go backwards. Then they stop, then they flicker, then they go forward, backward, and so on. What is happening is what I call the rule of three the first, the first thing that's happening is that we're slicing life into 24 frames to the second, or in the case of computer, 30 frames to the second. Half the time, the screen is dark. And in that darkness, that's when they substitute one picture for another. Now, in this case, what is happening, too, the second thing is that I have two identical wheels here. If I do that, you can't see the movement because the spokes are identical. That's the second thing that's important. And so if I go like that, still no apparent motion. If I go a little bit, that's fine. And then the third thing that's important is that your eye takes the shortest distance between two points. You've got two identical spokes. Why should it go from here to here when it can go from there to there? And that's why it goes the way it does the way it does. And therefore, when we animate things, we have to be conscious of this so we do not violate those rules and have something go backwards when we really wanted it to go forwards. Now I'll show you a practical application of this rule of three that uh, is, a, is a common mistake, especially if you're going to run, have a character running, and he's running very fast, and if you animate them on twos, and they, it's on, uh, he's hitting the ground every four frames, You've only got two drawings in essence. You've got four drawings, but in the speed, the left leg will cross over to the right and vice versa, and you don't get a good run. It looks terrible. What you have to do is put it on ones, and that will cure that. Many years ago, I learned to animate a walk this way. Now, in my bridge, I happened to be leafing through it sometime many years ago, and I noticed that they did not walk in this fashion. They walked this way. The legs apart was the extreme, but instead of going down, they went up. So Mybridge is right. Have to agree with Mybridge. Now I've taken you a great deal of distance from where we were before, and I know that you want to get ahead in the industry, and I hope these things that I've told you will be of great help. And you, there's one thing that you can count on. You never know from where the next 
favor will be coming from. And who knows, one day you might be sitting at a desk like this. gonna go. So based on that, I figured, well, this is eventually going to play itself out. And I had this film collection. And what motivated me was when the whole tune, ca tune catalog came out, that was back in the VHS days. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of rare cartoons that were on a lot of these VHS tapes. And because of their rarity, a lot of them were from poor sources. And there were disclaimers that said quality, mediocre, or poor, or very poor. And when I saw some of the titles, I wondered, well, wait a minute, I've got prints of some of these cartoons and the prints are pretty good. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason for it to be poor. So why not I put out something that's a little bit better and see what happens? So what I did was I came out with a sort of a cavalcade from my collection <laughs> called Before Walt. Mm -hmm. Sight unseen, when I described it, they, they bought, already bought 50. So I said, well, I've got to get, got to get this out. I later uh, revised it in DVD version in 2006 with the centennial of American animation. On the extras, there are individual profiles of all of the pioneers. So that was the beginning of that. And of course, I had the Out of the Inkwell collection. And that has been my biggest seller for the past 20 years. And... Um... You're still doing all the um, Inkwell images uh, releases and everything like that, too? Well, or? we're still selling those, and then we're going to have our 25th anniversary coming up next year, and there may be some surprises okay. coming up for next year. And one of the problems is the fact that I had to shut down everything suddenly in June of 2008 because I had a family emergency. My mother had six months to live, mm -hmm. and my parents were living on a rural acre. They had a, a farm they were running, and I had to go back, and my father developed dementia after my mother died. It accelerated. So I ended up being his caregiver for 11 years, mm -hmm. and so he would have been 100 last year. Wow. Mm -hmm. But uh, he passed away at age 98 in November of uh, 2019. Mm-hmm. So for about 10 years, um, Inkwell Images was pretty much inactive, but I wanted to have a new release because we hadn't released anything in 10 years. I had sold the company to another fellow in 2016, and I wanted to come out with our first Blu-ray, which was Toby the Pup. And I had an uh, agreement with uh, Serge Bromberg over a period of seven or eight years, and we were waiting for the scan for the soundtrack on the first from the museum. And when I found out that um, they finally had that, then we went forward with that as our first release. But I was not directly involved with that. There were some problems on that initial Blu-ray. And because the new president of the company was not performing to expectations, the stockholders had a, a uh, emergency meeting and reinstated me as president. I bought back the stock. I straightened out the problems, and I also corrected the problems on the Blu-ray. So that is the official story about what happened on that initial Blu-ray that was an embarrassment 
which has since been corrected. Mm -hmm. And based on that, we are going forward with uh, digital scans. Very good.